Are you struggling with how to sell during a recession? In this video, I'm gonna share with you what the top companies do during recessions so that they ensure that they thrive out of a recession. And I'm gonna give you tips on how you can apply that to your own sales. Here we go. Doing great, man. How yeah. Yourself? No, you know, just trying to stay away from that Rona. Woo -woo. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, <laughs> it's crazy dude uh yeah i was just i wanted to appreciate you taking the time for this i just wanted to get with you and kind of pick your brain really about that because it's freaking crazy town right now um uh in a large part you know what i do is sunbelt and selling um i know you deal with a lot of companies and work with them in a lot of different areas selling training just different things and um wanted to see kind of what you're seeing out there and really you know, what, what are some things that, that should be taking place right now in a down market where I'm used to going out, shaking hands, you know, letting my good looks and personality, you know, <laughs> you know, <laughs> help me. But, yeah. you know, we're, I mean, that's off the table now. And, um, I know you, I know you work with a lot of companies that really grew out of, you know, a down market yeah. and, I just wanted to get your thoughts, man. What what are the kinds of things you're seeing in the market that need to be taking place? Yeah, great question. And what I like to do when I, uh, as I plan my future, is I like to look at the past and, and kind of see the research that's been done and then look at the present and the best practices by those who are really killing it right now and then combine those things to really prepare and write out my vision for my future. And so, uh, so I'll share a couple things with you. And the first thing I want to share is just some research that was done with organizations from the eighties, nineties, early two thousands. And then even the 2008, uh, 07 through 09 recession, yeah. there was research done on organizations that survived that and then thrived out of that. And there were uh, three things that all those organizations did. And I'm going to share, share with you what the organizations did. I know you're a salesperson, but, uh, and then I'm going to apply it to the sales professional. So, okay. Um, I'm going to, um, I'm going to be taking some notes while you're talking. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, and, and so the, the three things are uh, that these organizations did one operational efficiency Two, um, they, they increased their marketing spend. So they spent more than their competitors on marketing. And then they, um, continued, uh, spending on R and D research and development. So what, you know, you're, you're an individual contributor, right? You're a sales professional. What does that mean to you and how can you apply that to your day in day out? Well, number one, operational efficiency, it's time to, to, you know, the old 80, 20 rule, right? Find out what are those 20% uh, of activities that are giving 80% of your return and then nail those things over and over again, right? What's, what's giving you the greatest return on investment and then only do those things um, during this time. We don't care if it's your favorite thing to do or your favorite product to sell, your favorite service to offer. You just do the things that are giving you the greatest return on investment. So that's number one. Number two, marketing. You, you probably don't have dollars to spend on marketing, but let's go back to what does marketing mean? It means how are we going to market? Just like the old school, you know, they'd sell the vegetables in the marketplace um, back in the day. That's marketing. How are you as a, as a sales professional going to market? And you need to get really creative with your, your ideas and your processes of how you're going to go out and go to market. Get inside your customer's head right now, right? Pause, hit the pause button. Don't just keep doing what you were doing. Don't uh, have a knee-jerk reaction and, and, and do something instead of doing nothing. Pause for a moment, reflect, get inside your customer's head, call them, ask them some questions, right? And figure out what their needs are right now and then begin to market in that way and invest your time and your energy resources in that. And then number three, R&D, it's, uh, it's kind of like what we're doing right now, right? Normally, you and I would be just meeting in person. We'd grab a coffee, we'd grab some lunch. And we talk about these things and have a conversation in that format. Well, now is the time to make that shift. And what I'm telling my clients, and I talk to a, 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 um, a statewide, all the dealers um, uh, of, a, of a certain product in Wisconsin just last week, and I'm telling them the same thing. Look, we've got to make the transition. We've got to make the shift. People aren't, um, there, there's going to be a new normal. 
and people are going to be shell shocked for a while. And you're seeing it right now because we've talked about it. Some some people let you go on the job site and they'll let you in their uh, their their job trailer and others say, hey, call us. We don't want to talk to you. It's going to be the same way for, for months continuing forward. So um, invest your time and your energy in learning the technology now while people are okay with the learning curve. And uh, you may find that as you invest in that research and development, figuring out the new ways to work, WebEx, you know, Microsoft Teams, whatever it is for you, um, you're going to find that, hey, maybe you can, you can squeeze in two more client meetings a day by doing it this way, and you can actually increase your sales during this time. So um, that's what the successful companies are doing um, during this time and have done in the past. Yeah. It, you know, it's interesting you say that because, um, you know, I've talked to, you know, I, you know, I know people with competitors and they're like, oh yeah, we're just, you know, we're waiting for this deal to go over. And I'm like, man, you can't be waiting for anything. That's what I'm thinking. I mean, you can sit there and wait, but the, now is the time to be reacting. And I think company, you know, if they sit on their laurels and just think, well, when this rolls by, I'm going to just um, get back to, you know, calling on my jobs and my offices and, you know, I'll just make some phone calls right now. And, 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 but not being, not really going at it and hitting a bunch of calls and making a lot of touches because it's going to, if people are going to, you know, competitors will wake up and figure out, Oh, we missed it. If we're not yeah. doing things, I mean, you know, and ha how that's going to affect who the top equipment providers are, you know? Yeah. Well, an 85% of um, the market leaders are dislodged during a recession. So um, oh, wow. let's say you're not the top sales professional right now. Well, you have an 85% chance that you could be on the other end of this thing, right? So um, yeah. and if, you are, if you are the top sales contributor on your team right now, don't sit back and think that you will be when this thing all shakes out. You've got to, like you said, you've got to be out there. And I'm dropping a video on my YouTube channel, Influence Trainer, uh, today that is all about how people are looking People in the marketplace are looking for leadership right now. Um, you yeah. know, will the real leaders please stand up? Um, <laughs> no longer, right? Is it okay if you see a lot of our entertainment stars, our, our athletes, our, um, our social media marketers, um, those types of folks, where are they, right? They, they, can't, they can't meet any needs for us right now. We're yeah. looking for practical answers and solutions to the problems that we find ourselves in. And the people that bring that, um, those are the ones that are going to move ahead. Your clients are looking, your customers are looking for real leadership from you, not just a corporate CEO email to the customers. That's great. That's fine. It's necessary. But what are you as a sales professional doing to really meet the needs of the customers that you have reaching out to them, showing them that you're here, like you're, you're not yeah. afraid you're moving forward and you're going to be with them through this whole process, whatever it looks like. And uh, you're going to be a partner in that. Yeah. Man, that's, that's great. Yeah, that's good stuff. What uh, would you say? I mean, um, I mean, just knowing the, the, the space I'm in and, and equipment, you know, providing equipment service, um, which is funny because a lot of, you know, we start, I started selling hand sanitizer and hey, clean and wipes and we're, you know, we've got these fog and, you know, but we're, we've, a lot of what our offering is, it's still all the equipment we rent. I mean, that's not, but it's, you know, what what specific things do you think we can do to add value that to that yeah well you know it's exactly like what you're saying it's it's the art of the pivot right it's it's making that shift you said you started selling some things that you hadn't sold previously maybe you always had them available to sell but you you weren't selling them and I was talking to uh, the owner of an HVAC company that I'm working with and he he has some uh equipment where he can actually clean the air, filter the air and clear out all of these contaminants. And that's what he's going to be selling because that meets a need, right? There's, there's yeah. people are afraid right now. They're, they're concerned about air quality in their home, um, about killing the, the bacteria, the virus, whatever it is. And so he is offering a solution to that. And that's really what we have to do is we have to be more consultative um, in our approach. So you want to go during this time, what the experts are saying, you want to go deeper with the client base that you have. That means making touches. That means reaching out, not offering a service. I reached out to a, a, a client yesterday. I just said, hey, I've noticed that with your organization, it's a big multinational um, organization. And I said, hey, I, I noticed on LinkedIn that um, you guys are doing some layoffs and, and I just want to check in with you, see how you're doing, see how you're processing through that. 
Um, because that's, that's tough. Even if you're not let go to see a lot of your friends and coworkers be let go. And, and, and that was it, right? That was the touch. And, and, and that was the reach out and he appreciated it. He responded to the email and, and I, and I met a need for him. So, um, you want to go deeper with the customers you have. Number one, that's first and foremost, touch base with them, see how they're doing. Don't be afraid to send the email or concerned about how it's going to hit them. Pick up the phone, call them, go deeper with them and be consultative. How are you doing? Hey, have you, I know you're working in construction, um, uh, JW, you're working with, with these con, uh, contractors. And what you want to say to them is, hey, I know you're a small business. Were you guys able to tap into some of those government funds? You know, have you, how are you guys doing? Are you going to be okay through this thing? And really care about them as, on a human level, right? And, and understand where they're coming from, number one. And then number two, and, and I, um, the first week or two of this thing, I, uh, I had a different approach. I thought it's not the time, right? It's not the time to do cold calls. It's not the time to do follow up on warm leads. Just go deeper with your client base. But uh, I have a, a coach and a mentor that, uh, that really challenged me on that front. And he started his business during the last recession. He's thriving <laughs> and he's all over the world. But um, he pushed back on that and he told me, hey, if you have value to add to your customer, you are obligated to reach out to them. Mm -hmm. and, and, and that's the same for prospective customers. So if you, if you can add value to a, a, a potential customer, it's a cold lead, you, haven't, you don't even have a relationship there, or maybe you haven't talked to them in a while, they haven't done the business in a while. If you can add value to them, that, that means if you can offer a product, a superior product, superior service, or a better price, then you are obligated to reach out to them and to make that offer to them. So yeah. go deeper with the ones you have, and don't be afraid if you can add value to reach out to the ones that, uh, that you don't have a relationship with. Okay, man, that's great stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Cause uh, yeah, no time like the present to get more, you know, fill the funnel. Um, mm -hmm. So that on the backside of this, of whatever the new normal, uh, you know, as the catchphrase goes, looks like, um, we've shown value. We've shown, yeah. look, we, we, we care about you. We care about your business on the other side of that, not just from a, how's it going to benefit me financially by renting you equipment, but you know, how are you guys doing? How are your people doing? Yeah. Um, man, that's, that's good stuff. Um, man, that's awesome, dude. I appreciate it. I'm i uh, I'm actually, I'm going to, I'm going to share this with some people on a call this Friday. Cool. So I appreciate you taking the time. Um, anything else you want to you to add or? Yeah, let me let me give you some um, just some one liners, right? I love these one liners because they stick with me and, and they've helped me as I'm processing through um, the day in day out. And uh, number one is don't say no for them, meaning the customer. Don't say no for them. Don't say no in your head before you pick up the phone, you know, yeah. and smile and dial. Um, <laughs> let them say no for themselves, or if they haven't responded to you yet in your outreach, um, don't assume that it's a no. Just assume that they just haven't had a chance to get back to you yet. I have had so many clients that have told me the only reason you got this job is because of your persistence. And, yeah. uh, and I love that. I love that. That's a badge of honor. That, that gives me energy to go out and continue to reach out to potential clients because I know I can meet a need for them. Number two, yeah. the sales are in the follow-up, right? That same thing, that persistence. So don't say no yeah. for, for them. And then those sales are in, in the follow-up. And then, um, Number three, make it easy for them to say yes, whatever that is. I know for myself, if I'm looking at something online, if they don't have a retargeting campaign to send me emails, to put stuff on my social media, so I'm reminded of it, I might have legitimately wanted to buy something, but we get, we get offered things all the time, right? And I forget yeah. about it and I, and I don't end up buying it. But if they have that retargeting down um, and they make it easy for me to make a purchase with them, I go with them, right? And the same is yeah. true for you with your product, with your yeah. service. And then overall, just to kind of one, one more as I was, we were talking here and, you know, people feel uncomfortable, right? Cold call. This is kind of a touchy time. Do I reach out to them? There's the health concern and then there's the recession and I don't want to come across. Well, he, needy is creepy, right? <laughs> so you don't want to go in there and be, and be needy, right? Hey man, I'm just desperate for a sale. Help me out. No, 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 no. That's, I don't want to work with people like that. Right. Um, so, so don't be needy in that way. Come in from a position of leadership and, and strength and confidence and say, Hey, I'm here to help you. I'm here to serve you. These are some of the ways I can do that. If you need that, I'm here for you. If not, Hey, let me know if you, if you need anything in the future. 
but uh, needy is creepy. So just remember that in your approach and in your emails with everybody. Yeah, no, that's good stuff, man. Yeah, no, well, dude, I appreciate it, man. Um, we're going to keep hitting it, blowing it up. Hopefully this road, it goes away soon. So. Oh yeah. You're going to do awesome. And even, you know, even if it doesn't, um, we're going to stay optimistic, but also respond to the challenges that we see every single day, right? It's adapt, yeah. change, grow all along the way. And that's really what's going to, the ones that are going to, um, uh, survive and thrive are, are not necessarily the strongest or the smartest, but the ones that are able to adapt to change the fastest. And so, uh, so as long as you got that mindset, you're good to go. If you found value from this video, please like and subscribe to the channel. To receive the free influence assessment, simply click on the link below that says influence assessment. If you have any questions or comments about influence, please comment below and I will look forward to connecting with you. Always remember, increase your influence, realize your dream.